very good. Now I think we're ready to start our questions and answers um, uh, session, which is in public, as you know. And um, just the, as I did yesterday, I want to emphasise um, the type of questions that ca can be uh, raised with the speaker. Um, in this case, it's confined to general points about the ethics overview uh, that uh, Dr. Sheehan has provided us with. Um, and I um, just want to emphasise again that the purpose of today's session is not to consider the ethical arguments on either side of the abortion debate, but rather to consider why ethics is important and to provide us with a framework for thinking about um, complex, complex ethical questions. Um, now, we have a number of roving mics again today. So um, I'll call questions from the floor and uh, Dr. Sheehan will answer them. Yeah. Try. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, um, I'm the facilitator for Table 11 and we have two questions. Uh, the first, if you could distinguish between ethics and morality. And the second is, how are ethics culturally influenced and have you seen a lot of differences in ethics between different countries? Thanks. Um, well, one cultural difference is in Australia, we don't care about rugby too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'll say. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so if I could take the cultural differences point first, um, I think um, there's a couple of ways in which the cultural differences are going are gonna to influence these sorts of things. And so one of them is going to be, and this is the temptation, uh, um, sorry. So one of them will be at the level of, um, at the level of the facts or a level of the way in which we understand the situation. So, I mean, think about, again, think about the coffee example. Um, there might be different kinds of attitudes to promise keeping or attitudes to meeting with, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps with helping out with female co-workers, for example. There might be different co kinds of cultural stances we might have to that. I mean, there's all sorts of ways in which cultures might differ. Um, but they would seem, to, a lot of those would feature into, would, would build into how we understand the situation. So how we understand the situation as being um, what people care about and the way they're used to behaving, what their expectations are. <coughs> Will, will vary culturally. And they're going to vary religion, in terms of religion as well. Um, and so they're going to feature at that level. <clears throat> in terms of the values, what I tried to suggest, it's in the way in which we articulate what we ought to do, what I tried to suggest was that the reasons that we give to each other will play the most important part, part in, in this. And that being from a certain culture, doesn't necessarily excuse you from giving reasons. It doesn't mean that, it certainly doesn't mean that being from that culture means that your culture doesn't matter. But the, what I was encouraging was the, the idea that no matter what culture or what religion we're from, that, that we still should embark on the reason giving and as, aspire to reasons that all people will, all people will, can go, can go along with. Um, so culture will feature in the process. Um, it will feature in the facts of the situation, it will feature in how we understand the situation. But the reason giving process, I take it, transcends that and aims to transcend that. Um, on ethics and morality, um, I, 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 I'm tempted to say um, that ethics has a Greek root and morality has a Latin root. So one's a Latin word and one's a Greek word, and that's the difference. Um, I think they're used in different ways, and I think that I think that we could. It's an interesting sort of empirical question about how people use the different, use the two terms differently. In terms of whether it's advisable that we think there's a distinction, I would advise against it, um, and the reason I would advise against it is because imagine we said so. One thing that people say is that morals are personal whereas ethics is social. Um, imagine we go with that distinction and we say it's a matter of morals and it's a matter of ethics. Then what do we call a situation where they're in conflict? 
Is that ethics or is it morals? Well, it seems like it can be neither, really, but we still want to be able to talk about it. Um, so I would, this is why I would talk about in terms of sort of what we ought to do is the central question. And then how we're we going to divide it up, but that looks kind of tricky. And I'd rather avoid it, if that's OK. Oh, thank you. Uh, table three. What part do gut feelings play in ethics? Should we consider them at all or leave them aside? Um, I, I, so, so gut feelings are really interesting to me um, because, I mean, obviously I have them. I mean, so one way of thinking is they're sort of, they're initial thoughts, initial responses that we have. One of the most interesting thing I think about what I do is starting from a gut feeling and then reasoning it through. Why do I have that response that I have? Why is it so strong? How am I to understand the arguments and the reasons for and against the particular action? And what is that, what's left of my, my initial response? So I think gut feelings really, could, I mean, partly they, they, capture, they, they capture a certain sort of initial sense that we have that captures our values and our assessment of the situation. But I certainly, I certainly don't want to give them, there's something to be explained. That would be the way I'd put it. So when we go through the process of giving reasons and, and articulating our reasons, the idea, part of the idea is to capture why it is that we have the response that we have. <coughs> Why do we respond in this way rather than that way? And it seems a good reason <clears throat> needs to be the kind of thing that does justice to the response that we have. I think it's rarely going to leave it as it is. So really, I think at the end of a process of, give, of thinking through something and giving ourselves reasons or giving others reasons, I think it doesn't leave our gut response where it was because that's a very initial sort of off the, off the top of the head thing. But certainly it's a key, it's a key thing, I think. Um, table three as well. Um, we're just wondering to what extent uh, do you believe that ethics and belief can come into conflict with one another? Um, so, so by belief you mean religious belief or value sort of things. Um, so one of the things I, I did definitely wanted to include in this when we think about and we think about the coffee situation is um, I do definitely want to include in that um, our personal values. So the idea of I need to think about what matters to me. But the problem is what, I, what matters to me generally doesn't always and straightforwardly apply in this situation. Right? So, so I know I have these general, part of, the, part of the reason that it's a difficult ethical situation is because I have conflicting values often. Right? So in that sense, that sense of what, what I hold dear, what I value, what I believe in that sense, is key. I mean, it's a little bit like our gut response. It's got to be part of them in the mix. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's up for grabs. I mean, I, I don't think it's not up for grabs in that sense. So I think what we're doing when we think through a situation is we think through those values in this, in this situation. So the process of talking to other people about why we do something or why we think it's justified to do something is partly a process of articulating our values and coming to understand them as they apply in this case. So they're sort of very important, um, but the process of talking them through is the process of, of becoming clear about them, not of dismissing them. Hi, I'm the facilitator for Table 14. And um, um, just in terms of how possible do you think it is to reconcile ethics on an individual sense um, in relation to a more general sense in society? Can, can the two be easily reconciled? And what, does, what role does the context play in that? The, the, the context? The context of the situation, yeah. I think the context is, is, is really important. I think the context is really important. Um, in terms of what, to what extent can the individual be reconciled with the societal. Um, I, I think my inclination is to say I don't think they always can be. I think that's the nature of things. I think there are going to be laws and there are going to be principles and society is going to think things that I don't think. Um, 
And I have to decide how to handle that. I have to decide why, why I disagree, where I disagree, and hopefully assist the system, the society will be flexible enough to allow me the space to think about those things, to think about the places where I disagree with, um, where I disagree with the society and the way in which it's headed. I can make, you know, take steps to change it, but that of course is also going to involve <coughs> making other decisions about, about what I care about. Um, I, I, I don't think, I don't, that's not supposed to be a sort of a, a, a futile, a sort of depressing thought. I mean, I, I want it to be actually the reverse. So I don't think, I don't think we can solve these problems because I think these problems are the problems of being human, as it were. So, um, and I think if they, are, if they become easy, if, if our society forgets that they're difficult, that that's a problem and they have to stay difficult. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't find a solution. But I don't want it to be, to be a solution that makes things easy because I don't think that's the way things are. And that's why one of the reasons I think that that societal individual tension that you're talking about is an important one. And I think one that, that, that is, as it were, intractable, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense. As a facilitator for Group 12, I'd like to ask, uh, there's some overlap, I think, from the last question. Um, is there any way of establishing an objectively ethical legal code, or what are the opinions on this? Um, you, so by that you mean a, an objectively ethical legal code? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so so objective, objectivity in ethics is one of those things that has been discussed for a long time. Uh, and, there's, and, and the arguments are still raging in the philosophical literature. Um, I can give you citations if you want, not that I'm sure you don't. Um, <laughs> um, the sort of position that I've been advocating, and I need to be clear that I'm advocating a position here, is um, that there is, that we can get some sort of objectivity in ethics. Um, but it's the sort of objectivity that comes from thinking about justification and the ways in which the reasons that we give make claims on all people and the possibility that all people could go along with those reasons. So could we have a system, that, a system of law that's objective? In the sense that I've been thinking, I hope so. I think what's important here is perhaps the aspiration to objectivity. So when we think about argument, we think about reasons, the more general and the more applicable and the more robust those reasons are, the more of a claim to objectivity we can have. But it might not be the sort of thing where it always goes away. It might not be that kind of, it might not be that kind of solution. How are we doing? Um, table four. <clears throat> As an ethics expert, <laughs> if there was a debate um, or a consensus trying to be or trying to be arrived at, where you have two sides where there are completely polarized opinions, do you believe that eventually or ultimately a consensus could actually be arrived at ethically? I'm, I'm still balking at being an ethics expert. Um, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time thinking about ethics. I'm not sure that qualifies as an ethics expert. Um, um, in terms of the consensus, so, so, so what I try to suggest about, about this sort of process of giving reasons, um, we can always agree. We, that is, we can always come to a consensus. But, but I don't think that the consensus that we come to is necessarily ethical. Right. What matters for the ethics, I've, suggest, I've tried to suggest, is the reasons and the way in which we give reasons and arguments. And so there's a couple of different situations we might have where people disagree radically. Um, it might be that they disagree radically, and this is a, a, a philosopher, David Wiggins has written about it. Um, it might be a situation where we disagree about things radically enough 
such that there's no hope. Right? And I think that's a situation where we can't make any progress. It might also be a situation where we don't have the same way of thinking about the question. And so there's no hope in there either. But then there's also another kind where, where what we need is perseverance. So where we do understand, we, do, we are talking about the same sort of thing. And we are talking about, have the same question. And where what we need to do is keep talking. What we need to do is keep thinking about the reasons that the other person gives. The hardest thing about those sorts of intractable differences is getting to the position where people are open to understand and accept the reasons that other people will give. And also be free to say no. And without, you know, so the idea of difference. So you and I might, in the end, have a different approach to things. But we might still understand, I might still understand and be perfectly justified, think you're perfectly justified in doing what you did. And you might think the reverse. So that would be progress in the sense of we, it's not quite a consensus. We understand each other's justifications and accept them. Now what makes, I think what makes this kind of situation slightly different is that there needs to be a decision, right? So that what, you know, there has to, in, in certain kinds of cases, you must make a decision. Um, and so getting on board with agreeing that there must be a decision and the decision can be justified in a certain sort of way, I think can help in some of those intractable cases. So getting to, and attending to the right kinds of reasons and the ways in which reasons function, I think can help if people are coming on board and understanding that a decision needs to be made in the face of the difference. Any, any more questions? Very good. Um, uh, we'll, we'll call this session to an end, so if there are no more questions. And um, obviously I want to once again thank Dr. Sheehan for coming here late last night. And um, <laughs> for having to make a confession about Australian culture. <laughs> <laughs> On a more serious note, I think Dr. Sheehan has given us an excellent grounding to think about why ethics is important and to understand that on a topic like abortion, it is possible that fair-minded people who have been presented with the same facts and information can come to different conclusions. Um, in later weekends, we, we will need to uh, come back to this debate. Um, and um, what we anticipate at this stage is a hearing um, both sides of the ethical argument on the topic. Um, and you, we, the baby, we may talk more about that later in the morning. Um, just for now, um, I have to say that we have plenty of food for thought, and I hope you found uh, Dr. Sheehan's presentation um, as engaging as I did and as insightful. And I get the distinct impression you did from the questions which have been asked. Um, the, the questions were very incisive and um, I, I do get the distinct impression as I say that uh, you've benefited from that um, and we're going to move into a private session now after the coffee break um, and um, um, I, I just say a few words at the start of the private session yeah, yeah. very good uh, um, it's the, the coffee will come shortly <laughs> and, 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 and the lovely buttons. <laughs>